think tank meeting, and I have 10 guys sitting around a table, and I'm going to have 10 different opinions about what a brand is. However, it generally comes down to two things. There's some kind of an invisible understanding. A brand is an inherently weightless commodity. It's, it's not something that you can, it's concrete. I can't hold it in my hand, per se, because it's not going to be the product, because a product isn't a brand. A brand is a much more interesting accumulation of statements. And the other thing that you're going to find is that it is often associated with symbolic behavior. The exchanging of signals, symbols. We live in a semiotic society that is a society driven by symbols. So if I can be talking about, I can be talking about Hummer, you immediately get an emotional reaction. You get some association. It means something to you. I can say Lacoste. I can say Nestle. I can say Starbucks. You can make the distinction. I like to talk, for example, about two different Italian brands, Gucci and Prada. Here we have two Italian fashion brands. They're exactly the same price point. They're exactly in the same category. They're exactly leather goods. They're luxury. They're family names. They're five letters. There's a double letter in each. So what's the difference? What's the difference between Gucci and Prada? I think maybe the women in the room have a better idea. I can tell you in the most elemental way that um, Gucci skews older, Prada skews younger, Gucci is more classical, Prada is more fashion forward. But this is the distinction between brands that quite often make. But ultimately it comes down to a simple statement. that A brand is a promise. This was said by one of the directors of my think tank, Ian Ryder, oh, maybe 20 years ago. He said a brand is a promise and it has to do with this compact that companies make with themselves or organizations make with themselves. It's, about, it's an ethical, moral decision. It's something where I say, what I am going to deliver. And then I am ethically, morally, spiritually obliged and compelled to live that through. Another person tacked on the words value to it, and that brings it back to the economic equation. And so, you know, you think about a brand, a brand is actually a lot of different things. Okay, so he's understood in the local market, but he's not understood offshore, so he's not a good international brand, an effective international brand. I happen to like the guy, um, and I happen to like his entertainment product, but like all celebrities, I am incredibly skeptical when a celebrity tells me to do something that is so far out of their competency. Now, some celebrity brands, some personal brands are interesting. For example, think of the actor Paul Newman, who just passed away. Does everyone know him? Paul Newman, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? No? The big American star. He always disdained the star system. He never bought into the myth. He didn't think he was anybody overly important. And what he did with his wealth is he set up a food company called Newman's Own, which were all sustainable organic products. In the course of his lifetime, they made $250 million of profits. And every dime of profit for that, or, that organization went into camps for children with terminal illnesses. Now that's a good personal brand. That's a brand with a conscience. And that's my nominee this year for the brand with a conscience. Anyway, okay, so now we're talking about offshore in Brazil. And more money is going to pour into that country, which has a much smaller population and it has a good industrial base, and it has lots of natural resources, 
and already has a very interesting manufacturing capability. You know Embraer? These are fine jets. These are fine jets used all over the world. They've been produced in Brazil for years. It's a fine product. So this country is going to be, is going to be a challenge. It's going to be an opportunity because you'll be able to create products for them and make really nice products. And you're going to find a lot of people, this gentleman has said, with, with lots of disposable income. By the same token, you're going to come up against local products you never heard of. The other barrier will be linguistic. Get out there and learn Portuguese as your third language, protons, if you want to do business in Brazil. Um, but I consider Brazil an immense opportunity, and I think that it's not really recognized in the world because we're so focused on China and India at the moment, but Brazil will be a competitor to you in 10 years or less. Russia, a lot of the wealth has been concentrated with the oligarchs. So that the creation of a middle class is not really the same thing numerically as in this magnificent nation where two to three hundred million people have been able to join the middle class in the last five years. And congratulations to you for doing that. Because that says something. That says that you've been able to avail yourselves of education and you've been able to deploy the greatest resource you have, which is your people. All right? But the Russians at the moment... They want the biggest yacht, uh, they want the biggest handbag, or the biggest diamond, you know. I mean, they're, it's about the, the extravagant display of wealth. It's not really, it's, there's, there's not a lot of, of ethical underpinning here. It is about the most opulent, the most extravagant. China is always going to have trouble, because there's no such thing as a good news day for China. They wanted it to be the Olympics, but they have problems with they don't really value people that are going to have immense health problems. When, when, uh, when two generations of smokers get to be my age, the, the medical... Good morning. Uh, as you were talking about intellectual property, yes. my question is related to that. It is said that all brands are... Tr all trademarks are brands, but not all brands are the trademarks. You said it is sad that all trademarks are brands, but not all brands are trademarks. Yes, sir. Okay. Will you please throw some light on this particular sentence? Uh, I think you've kind of said it, haven't you? Um, that's, simply, that's simply a statement of a technical process, really. What you're talking about is something in a much, you know, much more... You've made a pragmatic statement rather than a philosophical one. You've said it's sad. So you've injected a note of emotion into something, and then you've made a very pragmatic statement attached to it. Um, I don't know what more light can be shed on it. I mean, I guess I, you know, I could I could buy into your remark and say I'm really sad that that some brands are trademarks, but some trademarks aren't brands. Um, I think I think the question is more one an analytical one, a semiotic deconstruction. That, I guess, would lead me to whatever answer I could get from this. I'd look at the trademark, and I would ask myself deeply and dimensionally, what does it mean? What does it stand for? And then I would ask myself, is it an accurate reflection of the brand, and does it meet all of my standards for how brands need to live? Uh, that's, that's pretty much all I can say about that question, because I think that you actually, you're, you, the answer was embedded in the question that These were great questions, great questions. Now, this slide says it all. World brands. He is a global brand, isn't he? Yes, sir. The magic is in the people. The topic was interesting, but the magic we enjoyed was created basically because of his personality, his experience, his knowledge. Yes, no? Yes, sir. And therefore, we say thank you, Diganzi. Thank you very much. Those are great questions too. Great group. And I will take any